had some nice Saturday morning. So I decided I'm gonna record another video. Uh, I am once again experimenting with microphones, cameras. I'm recording it on two different cell phones. I don't know which one I'm gonna use. Uh, this time I'm not gonna talk so much about scopes as about mounts and covers, or just one real company. It makes mounts and covers and stuff called the odd mount. I mentioned odd mount spelled A A D M O U N T a fair bit because these are the mounts I use a lot. And this time around, um, I figured I should go into more detail, especially since they also make absolutely excellent uh, scope caps that uh, you know I keep mentioning, but I see some questions about them, so I figured I should do I should do a video. Anyhow, so this is my favorite precision scope so far, a Tangent Theta TT315M at 30mm, 3-15x50, front focal plane design, it is just excellent, and I outfitted it with a whole odd mount paraphernalia of all sorts, uh, just to show you. I've, um, I've seen, I, I've used odd mount scope caps a fair bit before for the first gen, and since then they've thought they redesigned them. And uh, aside from scope caps, they also make these cap tails and they also make uh, rings for parallax grippers, but only for SWFA scopes, I think. This, this one doesn't have it. So what this has from odd mount is the mount, the cap tail, the uh, eyepiece cover, and the objective cover. It actually has two objective covers. This one has an integrated heel flash. And there is another objective cover like this, and I'm going to swap this out on video, that does not have a heel flash. The engine data by itself comes with a tenebrae heel flash and uh, a cap, which are quite nice by themselves, I think. Uh, I do think odd mount caps are better. They're much, much sturdier. They are, I believe, virtually impossible to break. The first gen I couldn't break, and they tell me the second gen is even tougher, so well, we'll see. And uh, the way they are attached, the first gen was just kind of very tight fit slip on. The material they use, it's kind of a plastic composite material that's exceedingly tough. And these things are almost impossible to break. I mean, I gave it to my kids for half hour, they could break it, that's, that's like something. Uh, but anyhow, so the second gen uh, uh, caps have these little tightening collars, if you wish. There's a, um, in the 332nd hex range, it comes uh, with a cap. Uh, to remove, so to open the cap, there are a couple of tabs here, just push the bottom of it. If you can see here, they do not extend beyond the bottom of the scope. So in terms of how low the mounting is, you only need to worry about the thickness, and it looks like to be about two and a half, three millimeters. It's about a tenth of an inch or so, uh, thickness. But anyhow, so to remove it from the scope, we basically loosen this little screw, and it doesn't have to be Tighten very much and slip it off and that's it. To give you an idea, so this one has an integrated kill flash into the cap, which is kind of nice. On the tangent editor, the cap and the kill flash are two different things, you know, the cap is removable. Uh, the, if you look at it, I don't know how well you can see, I'll show you side by side. This is tangent theater kill flash uh, from a company called Tenebrae, which is a sister company, and this is the outbound uh, kill flash. You see that the cells are much larger on this, so it uh, the image is a little bit less dim with this side style of kill flash than with this. How effective it is as a kill flash is hard for me to say. From it's a little bit longer also, so from what I've seen, it's just as effective. And this whole this is all basically one piece. It's one uh, material. This whole honeycomb and everything the same plastic material. The tangentated kill flash is a uh, uh, machine delivered. So, but, you know, it's, it's very, very well made, but the odd mount is uh, something else. Here's the objective cap without the kill flash material. And all you need to do to put it on is basically, you know, make sure the screw is a bit loose. Slide it on and tighten it a little bit. It comes with instructions how you make it tight and you make it just a little more tight. Don't over tighten it. I honestly, I looked at it and I sort of disregarded it because it sort of makes sense to not freaking over tighten a plastic piece, but then again, I don't know, it's not. It does, this is not going to break anytime soon. 
uh, on the other side there is an integrated little nut there that does not fall out, that's where the screw goes. To open it up, you basically just do this and it's spring loaded and I kind of spring, I might put something soft here to cut down on the twain sound, there's a spring, all good. On the eyepiece to open it, you basically push on this tab, you know, lever and it opens. Okay. The cap tail has the same screw, it's also a 337 L range. It goes in there, not to remove it. Now it's fitted to the uh, uh, each one is individually designed for every magnification ring. There's some knurling there so that matches it, so it cannot slip, no matter how much you try. Okay. So, anyhow, so that's the eyepiece cap, objective cap, and the objective cap with an ink. This one's just tight. Yeah, there's a very slight amount of flex in it, but not much. Anyhow, an objective cap uh, with a honeycomb style uh, kill fashion. I don't know which I'm going to use, no permanent basis, I don't know, I'll probably put the kill flash on, I kind of like it. The funny story with this tangent data scope, for one of the tests I was doing where I was using it as a part of the comparison, I put on the kill flash and forgot about it, right, and I did the whole test of comparing it to some other products with the kill flash on. And, then, and I finally noticed that I was doing low light because the image fidelity was still on par with anything else out there or a little over touch better. But the image looked a little darker. That's what I might say. No, wait a second. Oh, I'm cutting off 20% you know, of the light. That's still good. That's how good these things are. Now onto the mount. I've talked about the mount before. Uh, one of the interesting things that uh, guys at Odd Mount do with the mount is that this actual aluminum mount is a 35 millimeter and there are uh, composite plastic or some sort of inserts from the same material that the caps and the cap tail are made out of that reduce the diameter and uh, provide some inclination if i am uh, so inclined okay the mount by itself is 20 moa so these are things just straight inserts that maintain this 20 MOA uh, incline. I like the inserts partly because they don't scratch the scope, so partly because the way this material is, it I don't think you'll see it very well in video. It's slightly rough, and it's not, it's not slippery at all. It provides a lot of friction, and I've used these inserts for a lot of different things, and uh, they they work really well. Also, if you decide to use it with different scope, you don't necessarily need a different mount. You just need a different insert. They for the 35 millimeter mount they have inserts to 34 millimeters. In this case, the inserts would take you down to 30 millimeter. The mount itself is very slightly larger than a 30 millimeter native 30 millimeter mount would be, but it's not so large. I mean, this is a fairly trim scope, and uh, maybe it adds a third of an ounce of weight or something. I don't know. Um, the they were a little bit worried when I talked to them that this would obstruct the use of the parallax, but you know, I don't think it gets in the way at all. So that's pretty good. Overall, I'm real happy with these. The mount uses T25 uh, screws for both ring caps and for gripping the rail. Um, they when they send you the mount, it comes with the L range and with a little piece, and, uh, and that's more or less all there is to it, I think. Oh. Um, there is an integrated bubble level, the base here, and the bubble level is uh, sort of a some sort of a treat and something glow in the dark sort of thing, which I like. It's pretty easy, pretty easy to see. This is the latest on the Gen three mount they've got it. So Gen one didn't have the bubble level. Gen two added the bubble level. Uh, I think I was probably partially at my suggestion. We talked about it, and then Gen three they added this uh, luminous uh, bubble level. Let's see what else. I think that's largely it for recoil control. There are three recoil lugs, so depending on what rail you have, you may be engaging all three or just one, any one is enough. Um, the amount of torque this clamps on the rail is remarkable. I think I've mentioned that I once had one of the scopes in an odd mount where I forgot to tighten up four screws here. I forgot to tighten three out of four. Basically what I do when I try to figure out where the uh, scope is supposed to sit in the rail, 
I basically flop it on, tighten, tighten one of the screws and look at it, right? And then what I was doing, I was uh, setting it up for the rifle, I tightened one screw and I forgot about the other three. And even the 358 were poor recoil when you don't bunch this thing. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with this mount. Now, to be clear, all right, I'll put this down. I'm sure you're getting busy with me twirling it in my, in my hands. There are a lot of good mounts out there, right? Um, I've used a lot of them. And most of them are quite good. I don't think you'll find, uh, I mean, there are some really crappy mounts out there, but most are good. Guys that makes good ones, Steiner has a new one that seems quite good. Night Force mounts are very good. Uh, with uh, American Defense Manufacturing, I don't like the vertical mount split rings too much, but uh, they work and I, I use a lot of them. Uh, Bobro makes really nice, good detachable mounts. Uh, not too big on LaRue, a good mounts, but. Um, they're vertically split and like they lever the way they do the levers, I think they choose up the rails a little bit. Um, I've used a lot of them. Many of them work. Some are there are a couple that are crappy. Most of them work all right. And in this price range, this is you know probably two hundred to three hundred dollar mount. In this price range, almost everything is quite good. Is odd mount better? I wouldn't be able to tell you. Right? I like the way it's designed. The guy who designed them is a really good mechanical engineer. Uh, you know, I've talked to him a fair bit. He knows what he's doing, but he's not only a mechanical engineer in this business. Right? What I like about them is that I have a lot of mileage for them, and I really like the whole business with composite plastic inserts. Really grip the scope well, don't slip. And if for whatever reason my rifle has some sort of a really screwy rail angles and remember i shoot a lot of old guns that have been butchered sometimes by me sometimes by somebody else so i don't always get all the rails aligned properly the inserts allow me to dial it in unnecessary or if i simply want to maximize how much internal elevation i have available i can use the inserts i don't have to buy new mount for everything and i, I kind of like that but aside from that i've just used a bunch of these and i haven't had a single Marginally not worth the issue uh, with any of these, right? So I, I like them, I like them quite a bit. Uh, but this is the first time I'm seeing the Gen 2 uh, scope caps and the, the cap tail, and uh, I like what I see. Everything is nice and smooth, nothing is gonna snag. Everything is either deformed or made like this, there are no sharp edges anywhere. Um, it's good design, I like it. I'm gonna beat it up a little more, see if I can break it, maybe have my kids give it another shot. And, uh, We'll go from there. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time.